so these are the remembrances from the year 2019. I start this around July 4th. So from July 4th, 2019 to July 4th of 2020. And I'm telling you, it is an honor and a privilege to read about these folks, um, the impact they have made on the Gunflint Trail. But more than that, I'm always moved um, by our common connection of how the Gunflint Trail has impacted our lives. So I'll just start with a couple of quotes from Sigurd Olson. Wilderness to the people of America is a spiritual necessity, an antidote to the high pressure of modern life, a means of regaining serenity and equilibrium. I'm going to have to do a little adjustment here. I named this place Listening Point because only when one comes to listen, only when one is aware and still, can things be seen and heard. Everyone has a listening point somewhere. It does not have to be in the north or close to the wilderness, but some place of quiet where the universe can be contemplated with awe. I think Sigurd Olson just helps capture some of the sense abilities we have about being up in this country um, and we have no words for it. The first person I'd like to remember is Nancy Capel Borson. And Nancy is Jerry Capel's sister and I don't know if J Jerry is here this afternoon, but Nancy passed away April 22nd of 2019. We missed her last year. Um, she lived for 79 years Nancy was a graduate from St. Olaf College in 1962 with a triple major. She worked as a canoe trip guide at Wilderness Canoe Base on Seagull Lake, where she met her husband, Vern. And after Vern passed away, she worked at the Grand Marais Post Office while raising her three children. And then in 1987, Nancy returned to school at the University of Minnesota Duluth and earned a PhD in molecular biochemistry. And at the age of 54, she began a successful career doing medical research at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. In 2010, she moved back to Duluth. Nancy loved her gardening, her hiking, and I know she was known for her rose mauling and her wood carving. Remembering Nancy Borson. Bob Einsweiler on Seagull Lake. He died July 4th, 2019. He lived for 89 years. And I was able to gain some insights from his neighbor, Mike Landy. He told me that uh, Bob was very su successful in his career and he was the director of Harvard's Lincoln Institute, that he voc vacationed with Cornelia and their three kids at Chickwalk in the early 60s. When they retired, they built their summer home on Seagull and they wintered in Florida. Bob was a GTHS board of trustee and many other volunteer jobs. I know I uh, served with him on the, it was the, the Gunflint Scenic Byway, I think. And his beloved Cornelia passed away in 2017 and she was remembered by the Historical Society at that year, remembering Bob Einsweiler. Alice Weck. Alice was on Poplar Lake. She passed away on August 31st. She lived for 83 years. She's on Poplar Lake with her partner, Biz Clark, and Biz gave me some anecdotal stories of Alice. Um, she said that Alice was a lifelong feminist. She helped implement the Title IX program through the Wisconsin Department of Education. She said Alice was the biggest fan of the University of Minnesota women's basketball team, never missing a home game. And while not given to pomp, celebration or tradition, Alice insisted on honking the car horn upon entering Cook County and never said why. She served on the Poplar Lake Area Association Board. She was a champion of water quality efforts. She established the Poplar Lake Loon Watch Program in 
counted what she could see from her front window. <laughs> and history was Alice's lifelong passion. She helped gather historical documents and artifacts for Chipwalk, and she began to write a history of the Blueberry Cabin, intrigued by its former life as a CCC camp and a bear cub resort. And I know that I took Alice's place on the board. She served on the board for a short time as the secretary, remembering Alice Weck. Mary Posner on Loon Lake. Mary passed away October 26th at the age of 80 years. She attended Ohio Wesleyan University. She was the fourth generation of her family to do so. She received a master's degree from Indiana University and postgraduate from New York University. Mary was president of Posner McCleary Incorporated an international firm specializing in management consulting, marketing, advertising, and financial relations. Mary and her husband, Alan, owned a cabin on Loon Lake for many, many years and came regularly for summer vacations. She helped the local effort of the last BWCA disputes, offering her knowledge of the Washington DC scene to the many neighbors who went east to argue their cause. Remembering Mary Posner. Tom Shank on Tucker Lake. Tom passed away on October 31st. He lived for 70 years. From his good friend Bruce Kerfoot. Bruce let me know that Tom had a very successful career in banking in St. Paul, that he and his wife, Melissa, were big canoe enthusiasts and they took many long trips in the Quetico. And they built a beautiful retirement home on Tucker. I think uh, Bruce put that in, especially because Bruce and Sue now live in that home. Um, and that Tom Shank, if he's, if he's familiar to you, it's because he went all up and down the Gunflint Trail with Bruce uh, back in the day uh, in raising the initial dollars for Chickwalk. He was instrumental in getting us off on the right foot at our startup. And at the tender age of 70, um, he dealt with ALS. He was diagnosed in May and then passed away in October. Mm. Remembering Tom Shank. Okay, next we have Joan Elbers. Joan is from Gunflint Lake. She passed away last November on the 4th at the age of 89. Joan was raised in Minneapolis and since her childhood spent time regularly in Cook County. Even when they lived across the country, their Minnesota trips were an annual event. And vacations to the family cabin off Cascade Beach Road were where those vacations started. And then they started coming up to Gunflint Lake in 1959, when her family, the Swenson family, had a cabin in the summer home group. And since 1990, she and her husband, Gerald, have had their own cabin on the Gunflint Narrows. Joan was an avid and unabashed supporter of the natural world. She's the author of the published annotated bibliography, Changing Wilderness Values, 1930 to 1990. And Joan's family is forever grateful to her for sharing with them her love of nature. Remembering Joan Elbers. Sam Repus. Sam had a place on Poplar Lake. Sam passed away in December on the 8th at the age of 89 years. Sam had very humble roots. He grew up in Canada. Every summer, he picked and sold blueberries for family income. Well, that resulted 
in a tradition on the Gunflin Trail, he became the master blueberry picker. He went on to become an engineer and he gradually moved to the United States and he married Sue in 1984. It is her family that owned the island on Poplar Lake. And gradually she and Sam got to spend their entire summers on that island. Any of the social get togethers on the lake, even in sunny weather, when it was time to go, Sam would declare, Susie, it looks like rain, we've got to go. And I guess Sam was known for his beautiful wooden bowls that he always had one in the mid trail auction. Sam and Sue retired to Arizona and in recent years, they lived in a retirement community in North Oaks. Remembering Sam Repus. Jean Olheiser from Gunflint Lake. And Jean, I hope I'm pronouncing your last name correctly. Jean passed away on January 3rd. She lived for 86 years. I got this from her obituary. I just love the quote. Intelligent, gracious, well-loved. She made the world a better place. Hmm. And her friend and neighbor, Bruce Kerfoot, let me know that she and her husband, Chuck, moved up to the Gunflint Trail after they retired. And she stayed busy. She worked for Voyager Canoe Outfitters. And then she worked at Gunflint Lodge. Maybe she's a familiar face because of the lodge. She had a great working relationship with guests. And Bruce said she was very skilled at booking vacations. After they retired, or she retired from resort work, they bought a home on Gunflint Lake, and that is where they were able to enjoy many years. Remembering Jean Olheiser. Barbara Graham on Gunflint Lake. Barbara passed away on January 15th and lived to be 97 years old. Barbara was married to John for 63 years and John passed away in 2007. Bruce had a very fun time remembering Barbara as a longtime cabin owner on Gunflint. And he can remember before they built their original cabin that she was out there personally tagging the trees to save them from being cleared for their cabin. She loved the woods. She was honored for her service and philanthropy in the Des Moines area. You can just Google her and read about her. Uh, Barbara and her husband, John, have been major donors and supporters of Chipwalk. Um, she might look familiar to you because she was always at our pie and ice cream social. And her, her daughter, Martha Graham, or Martha um, James, served on our board of trustees. Remembering Barbara Graham. Ron Sutphin, he was on Poplar Lake. Ron passed away on January 24th at the age of 79 years. He was married to Susan, his high school sweetheart. They were married for 57 years. Ron served in the US Air Force with the Judge Advocate Staff during the Vietnam War. He retired in 2003 from a very distinguished law career in Des Moines. And he was involved in many organizations, too many to list here. Um, and he enjoyed golfing, fishing, hunting, hiking, canoeing, camping, picking blueberries. His obituary in the paper said that they spent many memorable months at their cabin on Poplar Lake, sharing their cabin with family and friends, creating wonderful memories. Remembering Ron Sutphin. Albert Earl Newald, and I've only heard him being referred to as Earl Newald. He was the retired Gunflint District Ranger. 
He passed away on January 25th at the age of 86. From his obituary, I gained this information that he attended one-room schools in New Haven, Missouri, that he joined the US Air Force during the Korean War, and that he received a degree in forestry from the University of Missouri. He married Nancy Bowers in 1959. They raised three sons. And Earl worked for the US Forest Service for 30 years. Most people up here in the Gunflin Trail remember him as the district ranger during the, the BWCAW controversy of the late 1970s. And I know we could have an entire session on the stories of that time. In fact, he was a presenter at Chickwalk in 2015. Some of you might remember that. And he and his wife, Nancy, were great supporters of Chickwalk. Um, I remember last seeing him when we were uh, fashioning the timber frames for the watercraft exhibit building. They stopped by remembering Earl Newald. Doug Tuttle on Leo Lake. Yes, Doug is Dave's father. Doug passed away in February on the 13th after living 96 years. He was married to Maribel in 1945. He was a loving father of three. He encouraged excellence in every endeavor and taught his family the value of a job well done. He got to retire at the age of 55 as a plant manager at State Right Industries in Frankfort, Kentucky. They moved to the Gunflint Trail to be near Dave and Barb when Dave and Barb were reestablishing Bearskin Lodge as a premier destination. They soon became snowbirds, wintering in Arizona until Maribel's passing in 2000. They loved traveling, sailing, woodworking. He loved stained glass art, playing the organ, exploring family genealogy. And then he was remarried in 2002 to Ginny, and he remained very active until his health made travel prohibitive, much to his chagrin. His obituary had the, a quote from Louisa May Alcott. He was no longer afraid of the storm, for he learned to sail his ship, aptly describing his passing. Remembering Doug Tuttle. Bill Supel on Seagull Lake. Bill passed away in February on the 23rd after living 90 years. He got to practice law for 50 of those years. He was also active in politics. He was the state campaign chairman for the presidential campaigns of Robert F. Kennedy and Jimmy Carter. Mike Landy told me that he and his wife, Pat, had eight children and that his children are now a very active part of their Seagull cabin that they bought the cabin in the early 80s in partnership with the friends, and I'm not sure I'm gonna say your, their names right, the Soros, and they joined fellow Iowa City neighbors on Island Road, the Olmses and the Adamses. It was quite the Iowa University Blackhawk contingent, as is evident in our watercraft exhibit building. We have a black canoe, I think it belong, belonged to the Adams, and that black canoe sports the University of Iowa's Hawkeye logo. Bill and Pat were staunch supporters of the Gunland Trail Historical Society. And Mike shared this story that he volunteered for a trail cleanup one day, one year up at Chickwalk, and he brought a son or two. Mike said they were pulling invasive yellow hawkweed and Bill was right in there helping out and just amazed about such a thing as an invasive plant and that you could do something about it physically if you wanted, and we did. Mike chuckled and he said he was totally out of his element, but to his great credit, he was thrilled. Remembering Bill Supo. Beverly Keller on Seagull Lake. I think Sharon is with us today. Hi, Sharon. Beverly passed away in March on the 7th and lived to be 96 years old. And Sharon, thank you so much for sharing these insights into her life. That she and her late husband, Arthur, loved the Gunflin Trail, 
They were regular visitors at Trails Inn Campground from 1962 until they were given the honor of taking over the ownership of their cabin in 1976. That's 14 years. They spent every summer at the cabin and they shared their love of the BWCA with their five daughters and their growing families. Arthur passed away in 1991 and Beverly continued to spend summers at the cabin up until a few years ago, until 2015. Arthur and Gull Point neighbors, Franklin and Ellie Hartzell have been waiting for Beverly to complete their bridge foursome in heaven. <laughs> and yes, indeed, Alpine Lake Portage is the gateway to heaven. Sharon and her husband, Alex, became the stewards of this beloved cabin and they look forward to continuing to share the love of this beloved place with the family. How do they say Alpine Lake? Way to heaven. Remembering yeah. Beverly Keller. Bury your ashes. That's how I take it. I'll just let you know, Bill and Sue, you have your voice on. You're not muted. Sorry. <laughs> but you can take over at any time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Let's remember Marjorie Grinnell. Marjorie was on Moon Lake. She passed away on March 8th and she lived to be 94 years old. She was married to her high school sweetheart, Joe, when he returned from World War II service in the Navy. They were longtime cabin owners on the North Shore of Loon Lake, having a beautiful log cabin custom built for summer retreats for the entire family. She too was a dedicated volunteer for organizations, including Planned Parenthood, League of Women Voters, AFS, in the Edina Public Library. She was a devoted mother. She tutored school children in the Minneapolis public school system. Marjorie loved books, music, and needlework. And her adventurous spirit was at home at her cabin on the Gunflint Trail and canoeing in the BWCA. She and Joe are major financial supporters of Chickwalk. Remembering Marge Grinnell. Marion Powell Johnson on Saganaga Lake. Marion passed away in March of this last year of 2020. And we got these insights from her brother Dickie and sister-in-law Sherry Powell. He let us know that Marion was born in Tower, Minnesota so that his mother, her mother Dorothy could be close to family during the birth. Otherwise she grew up at Powell's Chippewa Lodge on Scandia Bay on the Ontario side of Saganaga Lake. She helped clean the cabins and run the dog teams for the family business, right along with her mother, her dad, Bill, and her little brother, Dickie. The Powell family, Dickie said, never seemed to call anyone by their real names, but by nicknames. Marion's was Muggins. Later, Marion began going by Moraine, and most people knew her by that. I hope I'm saying that right, Moraine. And at the lodge, she hung out, hung out a lot with her cousin, Charlotte's daughter, Ruth Scamp. Together, they fished and hunted small game. Marion moved down to the U.S. side of the lake in the 50s to work as a waitress at End of the Trail Lodge. I see Cheryl's here, too. And that is where she met her future husband, who was working there as a guide. She had four children, Bobby and Peter, who predeceased her, and Andy and Eric, who are still in the area. The kids were raised in the Twin Cities, but when she and her second husband, Peter, bought Jock Richardson's Saganaga Trading Post, Marion and the kids would operate that in the summers, carrying on a tradition. Remembering Marion Powell Johnson. Jack Carr on Birch Lake. Jack passed away just this last May 9th. He lived to be 79 years old. And his wife, Diane, gave these insights into his life on the trail. She said he started traveling up to the trail in his teens as a Boy Scout. And that was when he became hooked and fell in love with the area. She said in their early days of marriage that she would accompany him 
on many portages to various lakes, but Mountain Lake was one that he probably loved going to the most. The most difficult, but always the most fish. I think the most difficult portage is what she meant. She said they went to Alaska on two separate occasions to fish for halibut as well as trout and salmon. But Jack said, fishing is better in Minnesota. He loved to fly fish on Birch Lake and he even tied his own flies. And she said, and let's not forget ice fishing as any time he could get away for a few days, he was at peace and cold weather did not seem to bother him. He said, it was always warm in the fish house. Remembering Jack Carr. In closing, again, as we try to put words around what we've all experienced, what we all hold in common in this place we call the Gunflint Trail. Sigurd Olson offers us this quote, in wilderness, people can find the silence and the solitude and the non-civilized surroundings that can connect them once again to their evolutionary heritage and through an experience of the eternal mystery can give them a sense of the sacredness of all creation. With that, I'll bring this to a close and would like to open it up if there seems to be some time. Let me know if I'm speaking out of line in offering that to let others um, share if they would like. By all means, Barb. Okay. Just go ahead and unmute yourself if you want to send a chat to me but because you want me to share something, I can do it that way as well. I know I've certainly heard the quote over and over again that, well, I think it comes from my own husband that um, living on the Gunflint Trail, heaven might be a letdown. <laughs> <laughs> the, the people re we remember today uh, could either confirm that <laughs> or, or know that um, it is a paradise as well. So thank you for letting me um, share this. It is really, uh, like I say, an honor and a privilege to get to dig in. And I don't know how, about you guys, but I love reading the obituaries in the morning. Um, and when it's about our friends and neighbors on the Gunflint Trail, my life is just enriched by hearing their stories and reading about their lives. So thank you. Barb, that was a wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Arden. It was, it was fun to do. <clears throat> thank you, Barb. It's people like you that make heaven a nice place to visit. <laughs>